Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. Today's episode is a little different. The object we've got is a little big to put on the tray. We'll try it. Yeah, it's not gonna work. So a little different today. This thing is too big for me to use the regular teardown table with. So instead today we're using my uh, my teardown bench that I use for engines and transmissions in my own shop. So this is a food waste disposal. And it is brand new, but it also looks like it maybe got dropped out of a truck. It's pretty badly damaged some pieces rattling around inside it. Motor does not turn freely. So it's pretty much scrap. So let's tear it down and take a look. When we talk about a food waste disposer, the, the main component is up, up here in the top and it's this device called a shredder. And what we're doing is attaching this to the bottom of a sink. We're feeding in food waste and we're feeding in water. And this dip would rotate shred up the food waste, take that water along with it, and flush the entire thing out the outlet. But let's tear it apart, take a look inside. Interesting things to note here. The, the first one is that the motor is basically destroyed. The bottom of this was hit so hard that all the fasteners bent and the end bell of the motor actually ripped the threads out of the mounting holes. So the entire motor is just here. <laughs> it's just loose. This is a snap ring, and these are snap ring pliers. You can see I've got a pretty extensive set for service. You don't need a set this extensive, but it is nice to have. The fasteners are just gone from the back of the motor here. But um, what we're looking at here is the centrifugal switch. So there's a centrifugal mechanism here on the motor that would fling these weights outward. And when these weights move, we're able to open and close this switch. So this brings in our starting components until the motor comes up to speed and then drops out the starting components. So very simple switch mechanism here. You can see the little contacts. see here this is the the throat and we'd have a water fitting here if we were bringing water in through this throat there is a gasket underneath 
you can see this gasket here. So this is one potential failure on these. But now that we've actually got this all torn apart, we can start to see the actual shredding mechanism, which has just conveniently come right out of the motor. So this was our motor. Uh, this motor, if we look at the data plate on it, looks like we were two horsepower and 115 volt or 208, 230 volt, but always single phase. And we had a capacitor and we had an overload as part of the whole wiring for this. So now if we take a look at this motor, you can see the, the shredder has a piece that moves here in the center and it has a fixed piece. So we call this outside the stationary shredder and we call this the rotating shredder. And the food waste would go down in these gaps get shredded up, also get kind of thrown around or whipped into a, a bit of a spiral by these blades. But now that we've got this mostly apart, I think we can actually get the stationary shredder out. together a puller here to, to force the jaws to stay outward so we can get some some real bite on that all right and that leaves us with our inner shredder here our moving shredder so we got our stationary or fixed shredder we've got a rotating shredder and you can see that's just a, a machine piece of cast iron it sits in there and it's kind of clamshelled together with some silicone on it and that's pretty that's pretty much it. We'd have a gasket that's sealed along the top here. You can see that back here. Now let's get this apart. The official factory procedure for this is to hold it with a pair of vice grips while you take the nut loose. That actually work pretty good. So the factory procedure tells you to use a puller, but this being brand new, this might come apart without a puller, but probably not. It, with this being cast iron, if we pried on the edges too hard, it'd probably splinter. Sometimes on something like this, you might see a threaded hole, but I don't see a threaded hole. We might have knocked it loose just from banging it around. Yeah, there it goes. Probably never come off that easy in the field. So you can see the machine center there, ceiling washer. So you figure this and this are both iron and they are both immersed in water all day. And they just sit here and spin. So we'd have a very close fit. And those two would spin inside each other like that. And then underneath here is probably our most common failure point. It's this seal.
Let's get our keys here, driving into our rotating cutter. And then we've got a shield, try and keep that debris from getting down to the seal. And there's the seal itself. Now underneath that seal, it's a spacer with another seal, an O-ring this time. So we've got a key there that was keyed into that. And then we've got our bearing. And you can see here there's two bearings. There's still another one down inside there. But these are the, the most common failure point. If the seals fail to these bearings, and they're just a roller bearing, a needle bearing, uh, tapered roller bearing, they're going to start to rust. And once they start to rust, it will get loud. And once they get loud, you're pretty much done. You... There is another seal underneath here. Let's throw these off the side so you can see that. There's another seal underneath to keep anything from the outside from getting in. So you can imagine the amount of work it just took to get this thing apart with it being brand new. And it's shipping damaged, but brand new. Once this has been in service long enough that it's gotten to a point where the seals have started to fail, it's a huge job to overhaul this thing. It's really almost never worth it as far as how much time it takes and how much struggle you put in to get the machine apart to this point, get new bearings pressed in, and then put it back in service. So when we talk about principles of operation, we've got an electric motor, very straightforward, just like every other motor. Only difference is it has a long shaft, which goes through several additional bearings and several seals. Once we get past the bearings and seals, we get to our rotating shredder, which is just a cast iron disc, which rotates inside our stationary shredder. And then we put water and food waste in the entire system. It gets shredded up, it falls down into this area and is washed out the outlet, which was this piece we took off back at the very beginning. And this is threaded to attach to PVC or copper pipe. When we talk about how these fail, it is possible to have an electrical failure. You could potentially have start components go out or even the control box that operates this go out, which is sometimes mounted up under the counter there. But by and large, they're very reliable. The most common failures are here in the bearings. And a bearing failure typically happens because a seal has dry rotted or gone out. And once that seal has failed, you start getting water down in this area the bearings will rust up and seize. From that point, it's typically a better deal to just re replace the entire unit. If we look for other failures here, we could potentially have some kind of leak. We've got another seal that's up under here. It's on the, the inlet. Could potentially have a leak from that seal or even from the silicone seal underneath the uh, stationary shredder. That's pretty much it. Like I said, very robust, typically very reliable. By the time you get to a bearing failure, it's a huge job to tear it apart. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what's involved in opening up and diagnosing and tearing down a garbage disposal or a food waste disposal. Thanks for watching. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a SmartCare technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a SmartCare technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.